one thing that is really fascinating about communications is the impact that modern communication systems, and in particular wireless networks, have on everyday life. As a matter of fact, the favorite way with which people connect today is through wireless. I am part of that say, movement of uh, people who have looked at uh, the future of uh, communication systems, especially wireless communication systems, and somehow have shaped the direction of uh, research and development, which now industry is moving to translate into standards and protocols and systems. Los Angeles, University of Southern California. This is the workplace of one of the world's leading experts on telecommunications and information theory, Italian-born Giuseppe Cairi. Smartphones, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi are now an integral part of our everyday lives. For these digital communication systems, he invented pioneering coded modulation methods, which proved to have a lasting impact on the practice and standards of modern wireless communications. But data communication is reaching its limits. Communications engineers assume that the spectrum is already overloaded and could even break down completely in the near future. The spectrum crunch is the fact that uh, there are predictions on uh, the demand of wireless data in the next few years. Few years means from now to, say, 2020. And these predictions uh, are quite to be worried about because uh, they predict uh, a factor, an increase of at least two orders of magnitude, which means that if today everybody consumes, say, one megabit per second on average, eventually people would like to consume 100 megabit per second. Expanding the bandwidths will not suffice to deal with the enormous amounts of data we are generating. The entire network architecture has to be changed. Kairi and his team are trying to create the theoretical principles needed for this to happen. It really requires a big rethinking of the original cellular networks and uh, going, for example, to much more dense deployments where many more cells per unit area, maybe working at uh, higher frequencies, so people are looking at the higher and higher frequencies. For example, here we are in this anechoic chamber and a colleague of mine is making measurements at the so-called millimeter waves. Whilst it is possible to achieve greater bandwidth at higher frequencies, to get reception, the transmitter and receiver have to be so close together that a large number of transmitting antennas are required. Software-controlled radios are another testing tool. On the topic of network congestion, Kyrie and his colleagues have the idea of connecting several base stations with one another to channel their individual signals into a combined one. This mixed signal is then decoded by the receiver so that it only receives the messages intended for it. Synchronizing these signals is a hard nut for communications engineers to crack, but it has been demonstrated by fireflies. If you have a lot of fireflies in the same room and they, they are blinking, each one is blinking on, on its own, but they see each other. So if they see each other, some, uh, at a certain point they start synchronizing and if you wait long enough, they will start blinking all at the same time. So this is called the firefly effect. And uh, essentially, this is the idea underlying these schemes. So these different transmitters keep exchanging information packets until they reach a consensus on the frequency that they should use. Encoding mixed signals is also part of a visionary project. Kyrie wants to connect laptops and mobile phones and integrate their temporary storage in radio communications, perfect for video on demand. The more devices involved, the more data can be transmitted. Genius, but where is it supposed to get us? I'm not 100% sure that this is a good thing. When you see 
There's a hundred people not talking to each other because each one is texting somebody else and is posting stuff on their Facebook page just because they can, just because they have a terminal. And, and this prevents a very simple personal interaction in a one meter range. I'm a little bit scared, maybe because I'm an old fashioned guy. Maybe I should look at these things more like a, a matter of fact. Something that I would like to do is to somehow really uh, bridge more the gap between theory and practice. In the sense that uh, I work in an area where I always tell my students, theory is practice. Because the distance between theory, algorithms and implementation is really short. Professor Kaire wants to bridge this gap between theory and practice at a new location. The Alexander von Humboldt professorship is taking him from LA to TU Berlin and the Heinrich Hertz Institute. Here he will find the ideal environment for his experimental ambitions.